Well, hey folks, just when you thought the measles news was taking headlines by storm, another case of potential Ebola pops up out in Sacramento. It's true. A tough time to be in that state for sure. First, the Disneyland measles outbreak, now this. But we've seen a lot of these warnings before about Ebola. Not all of them turned up to be infected patients. Medical experts transferred the patient to the UC Davis Hospital after nurses expressed concerns they were not properly equipped to handle an Ebola patient at that hospital, the Mercy General Hospital. Now the patient has been relocated, isolated, and awaiting several different test results. Now, while several big pharma companies are still working on a vaccine and some human trials already underway in Africa, the FDA still has not yet approved an Ebola vaccine for medical use here in the States. You know the saying, sharing is caring. If that's true, then the ATF must care an awful lot about local law enforcement. The two groups coming together to share a big haul of information and data, specifically about guns and ammunition. Specifically a big database with uh, shell casings and fired bullets. The ammo leaves several clues. You might know this, almost like fingerprints. And police can use that information to trace those clues back to the gun that first fired the ammunition. Of course, if it's registered. And with several new partnerships popping up between the feds and local law enforcement, especially in several big cities, officials are starting to report a much higher arrest rate for violent crimes. And speaking of guns and violent crimes, the former New York City mayor forges ahead with a new plan to curb gun violence. Michael Bloomberg spending a lot of money to push new laws in at least 12 different states, Nevada, Arizona, Maine, just a few of the uh, states on that list. Many of them have already gathered enough signatures to initiate a ballot question in 2016. Now that would make it harder for people to buy guns from private dealers or at gun shows. Obviously a controversial ruling. Now, these new proposed laws would also take guns out of the hands of anyone with domestic violence or abuse convictions on their record. Political scientist Robert Spitzer said, quote, for the first time in gun politics history, the NRA is being outspent by the pro-gun control forces. Now, the NRA accuses Bloomberg of targeting these states with perhaps more vulnerable governments spending lots of money to pass these tough gun laws and then using that claiming leverage in a national victory to the press. A new report by the uh, Justice Department Inspector General disputes allegations that the government hacked the reporter's computer. This reporter, former CBS News correspondent Cheryl Atkinson, she claims her home computers were secretly monitored, information deleted. Now, she claims it was due to her reporting on the Fast and Furious gun running scandal and, of course, those terror attacks in Benghazi. Two hot subjects, both casting a negative light on the Justice Department. Now, the Inspector General report found no evidence to support her allegations. Go figure. Atkinson says she found a suspicious wire cable protruding from the back of her computer at work and at home. And it's one that she says she didn't put there. The feds took the computer and inspected it and said, no, that's not ours. Must belong to the internet company. That's their explanation. Now, when Atkinson took video showing someone remotely delete items from her computer on the screen, you could see it there in the video footage, the feds explained that phenomenon, saying the delete key must have been stuck on the keyboard. Atkinson says this new report is only releasing part of the evidence, and now she's suing the Justice Department to try and force them to answer some tough questions. But of course, this is only hardly the first time the government has launched an internal investigation and cleared itself of any wrongdoing. Convenient, I know, but we saw an awful lot of that in the last decade. One case in particular, the use of torture against terror suspects. We now know the name of a man who's blowing the whistle on the Bush administration. His name, Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, the man who used to be Colin Powell's own chief of staff. Now, Wilkerson admits to Vice News that the U.S. military did in fact detain and torture prisoners not just in Cuba's Guantanamo Bay, but also all over the world. Secret dungeons, torture chambers, set up in places like Iraq, Afghanistan, even London. Now Wilkerson, who's always been a vocal critic of U.S. torture tactics, says still today the military is using these same controversial methods. He says these CIA torture methods were used to gain quotes and information from prisoners that, even if gained under extreme duress, would also justify the entire war in Iraq. Now, Wilkerson is a famed uh, veteran of the Vietnam War. He says the war in Iraq was far worse and much less justified than the Vietnam War. Some strong statements from a man used to be in the White House administration. 
Elsewhere, one man is dead, another seriously injured. Meanwhile, a rap mogul arrested and charged with murder. It's all straight out of Compton. CEO of Black Capital Records and Death Row Records, Suge Knight, turned himself into authorities after the police learned about an altercation starting out on a film set. According to reports, Knight was filming on the set for a new film called Straight Out of Compton, and prosecutors believe Knight later ran over two men with a red truck in a restaurant parking lot, happening about 20 minutes later. Witnesses at the scene say Knight actually backed over those men with his truck before fleeing the scene. Now, while Suge is staying silent, his lawyer says it was just an accident. Attorney James Blatt said he was in the process of being physically assaulted by these two men, and in an effort to escape, he unfortunately hit the other two individuals. He was in his car trying to escape. Knight is cooperating with the authorities and plans to fight the murder charges in court. His first hearing not yet scheduled. In Washington, D.C., it was a hearing of a different kind, and a group of protesters got quite the earful from Senator John McCain. Quite the scene there, the panel was supposed to be hearing testimony from former secretaries of state, testimony about global war and threats to national security. Instead, a group of anti-war protesters who call themselves Code Pink showed up. And as you can imagine, that didn't sit very well with the senator from Arizona. I've been a member of this committee for many years, and I have never seen anything as disgraceful and outrageous and despicable as the last demonstration that just took place about, you know, you're going to have to shut up or I'm going to have you arrested. If we can't get the Capitol Hill police in here immediately, get out of here, you low-life scum. Of course, Senator McCain was famously taken captive as a prisoner of war in Vietnam himself, a defining moment in his life and clearly one that he even admits shaped his own views on foreign policy. Capitol Police did eventually intervene and arrest some of those protesters when they got very close to Henry Kissinger, waving handcuffs within mere inches of his head. The 91-year-old Kissinger served as the National Security Advisor and Secretary of State under Presidents Nixon and Ford. Speaking of presidents, the race for 2016 officially underway. And you know what we say around here, you only get what you vote for. But that's only if they're on the ballot. And now we know for sure Two-time presidential candidate Mitt Romney will not run for the White House in 2016. It's official. Donald Trump getting his wish, or at least half of it anyways. He's been vocal speaking out against Romney and Jeb Bush. But now the former Massachusetts governor announced his decision during a Friday morning press conference saying he'd rather give the opportunity to other GOP nominees. How kind of him. Now, you know the real shame lost in all of this that that this ALS Ice Bucket Challenge video is now on its way to becoming an ancient relic. And or to make a contribution to ALS. Uh, this is an honor of him, and so I'm planning on doing both, and tonight I have a little help from one of my friends. Hey, buddy. Hey, How, you doing? How are you doing? How good. <laughs> it is cold. 